I'm the Reverend Will Gibbs. I'm the vicar of St Mary's Church in Redbourne and it's a great joy that I've come here to Emmaus in St Albans and I've come to meet uh, Heather Herford who's the chair of Emmaus in Hertfordshire. Heather thank you so much for giving time so that we could come and uh, chat and uh, talk a little bit about the work of Emmaus. Thank you so much for your welcome. Well thank you for coming Will. It's a, it's a great pleasure to meet you. Thank you. I wondered if we might just start by saying something about Emmaus, how it started, uh, what, what was its sort of origin? So Emmaus is, um, as you know, it's a homelessness organisation and it was started in Paris after the war um, in 1949 by a French priest called Abbe Pierre. And Abbe Pierre was um, appalled by what he saw on the streets of Paris after the war, the homelessness and, and the despair. And initially, um, he opened his own doors, I think his own presbytery and, and his own home. Um, but he very quickly saw that um, giving people a roof over their heads wasn't enough in itself to help them move on with their lives. And that what people really needed was a sense of purpose and, and something to live for. So, um, so he incorporated work into that early offer of, of accommodation and the work that at that time was most easily available was I think what was called rag picking then but it was essentially collecting, recycling, recirculating other people's rubbish and that essentially is the model of Emmaus that, that has existed you know to, until today um, in, in time, that rubbish and collection, the recirculation, started to generate an income which supported that first community and the development of new communities. And as I say, that is, that's the essential model that we rely on still today. Fabulous. So it started in Paris, but mm -hmm. it spread to this country? It's, and... um, it became an, an international movement. Yeah, so it is, there are immense communities all over the world. Um, it came to this country in the early 1990s thanks to the efforts primarily of a man called Selwyn Image who opened the first community in Cambridge mm. um, and Robert Runcie, the former Archbishop of Canterbury who was also former Bishop of St Albans also became very involved in the Mayas at that stage um, and Indeed, he was um, a, a sort of prime mover in, in bringing Emmaus to Hertfordshire because he spent his last years in St Albans. Yeah, I'm interested by the name Emmaus and why um, uh, Father Pierre might have chosen that name. I mean, it's, it happens to be perhaps my favourite passage in the whole Bible. I love that sort of um, story because it goes from despair to hope and mm. transformation and and for the people in that Emmaus story in Luke's Gospel it's a, a change of direction and I wonder if there was some of that behind the choice of that name. Well we can only guess but as you say the, the message of hope arising from despair is a very powerful one and that may be the reason that Abbe Pierre chose to call the first community Emmaus House because of that association with that story in the Bible, many people mistakenly think that Emmaus is a religious organisation, and it isn't, it's a secular organisation, um, despite its roots with Abbe Pierre and the fact that we've been very fortunate over the years that many high profile figures associated with the church and, and indeed local churches like yourselves continue to be so supportive so that is fantastic but that's very much part of being involved in the local community yeah. and wanting the community to be a part of what we do but I think that that hope coming from despair um, was really you know an essential part of the the sort of fundamental ethos of Emmaus as, as started by Abbe Pierre mm. with its three pillars of home work and solidarity which is all about helping people less fortunate than yourself yeah. so that's a real principle here that as soon as you come into a community and so you now have a roof over your head that you're engaged in work that supports people who are less fortunate than yourself and for all of us that's something that is really important to self-esteem and um, sort of being able to move on with your life. Lovely. So how long has the Emmaus uh, community been here in St Albans? 
This one was opened in 2002, so we're celebrating our 20th anniversary this Wonderful. year. I think the big turning point in that, that program of work to get this started was the eventually successful application to the big lottery who provided a very significant grant and that helped get it over the line and we've been going from strength to strength ever since. Mm. Um, I notice you refer to the people who come here to um, have accommodation and to work and to, to receive that, uh, share in that solidarity as companions. Mm. And I, I really like that choice of um, name because it, it, it gives dignity to people who perhaps have found themselves in a very tough situation in their mm. lives. And um, I wondered if you might say a little bit about um, how many there are here and, and, and what that word um, companion means for you. Well, I think, it, I think it was a word that was adopted by Abbé Pierre, so I think it's a word that's used internationally. Um, mm. And it somehow speaks more to the ethos of a mess than some of those other words that tend to get used in social services, client yeah. service user, all of those. Um, it, it's always very difficult to find the right word. So I think... Um, there, there is something, though, in that word about recognising the importance of um, social networks, companionship, mutual mm -hmm. support, yeah. that is very much a part of how Emmaus communities function. So I, I think, you know, by being companions in a community like this, people are able to help each other to come to terms with some of the issues that may have Mm. Um, brought them to that situation and then to help them move on and the whole essence of what we do is to try and help people to move on to get their lives back on track yeah. um, and hopefully uh, you know regain their own accommodation and, yeah. and a job. That's lovely. I mean, my, my understanding is that the, um, the word companion, um, one of its sort of roots is from the French word for uh, bread, pain. So companions are people who share bread. Mm -hmm. And I love that idea that the, the, the companions here work together, they live together, they live alongside each other, but they, they would eat and, and just share, um, as you say, from perhaps very different experiences and backgrounds and so on. But what brings them together is the care that they can find here and the support that um, would, would give them over time, perhaps independence again. Yeah. And I, I, I love the, um, the commitment that Emmaus makes to um, the, the longer term. There are lots of sort of soup kitchens and, and hostels that would give people a bed for a night. Mm. But uh, one of the things I've understood about Emmaus is that there's a longer term commitment rather than just um, the immediate need and it being rather like a sticking plaster, but actually to try and give the support and the care that really tries to um, address some of the reasons perhaps why that person found themselves homeless and then um, building them up and, and giving them um, the support they need that they could then regain some independence and live mm. um, out of the community in time. Yes, well, as, as I said, work is, is sort of one of the fundamental pillars of the, of the ethos of Emmaus. Um, and, you know, the hostels and night shelters do very good work, but um, many of them require people to leave during the day. And, you know, that often means that people haven't got anything to do. Um, and that in itself can be very problematic for m mental health, for people struggling with addictions. They're provided with support, mm. with, um, with training if there are p particular skills that people want to develop so that they, yeah, can move on to find a job that, you know, it suits them um, ideally or better skilled anyway to, yeah. to move on. Lovely. And are there other rules that you have in terms of what you expect from the companions when they're here? Well, um, the, the biggest one is, uh, I think, is around drink and drugs. Um, so we do have a rule, a rule, no drink and drugs on site. Um, mm. And that is very challenging for many people. M many of the people who come here have really struggled with addictions in the past or indeed may still be struggling. Well, we're really delighted that um, as a church we um, are making Emmaus um, here in um, Hertfordshire our charity for this year. Um, we hope we can raise lots of money for you. Well, we're very, very grateful um, to you, Will. Um, could you say a little bit about how we, uh, how that money might be useful to you? What, what sorts of things you might um, be able to do with that? 
Well, there's a very long list. Um, you'll see when we go round that this, this building, as I said, it's an old nurse's home. Um, it's a Victorian building and it is really showing its age. Over the last year and particularly over this last winter, um, some of the problems have really come to the fore. So in particular, the, he the heating system, we've really struggled to provide people with consistently with heat and hot water for mm. showers. Um, the roof is in a bad way um, and we've had some real problems with the electrics and um, some of that work has, has been done. Um, so, so that's the sort of immediate priority. Fantastic. As well as money, how, how else can, um, can we and others um, support the work of Emmaus? Well, um, there are a couple of ways at least. Um, the first is around donating furniture yeah. um, and other sort of other household items, so bric-a-brac, pictures. Mm. Um, those things sell very well. So yeah, good quality second-hand furniture is is always welcome. And then through volunteering mm. as well. Um, we might put a post on our website sometimes or up on social yeah. media that, you know, can anybody help us with X? Um, so I think those are the primary ways, Great. really. I love that model because it, it, it's very contemporary and, and um, you know, in terms of um, recycling rather than disposing of furniture. It, it, and I love that, you know, it can be given a new home and, and repurposed or upcycled. Um, so that's great for the environment. It obviously yeah. raises money for the work that you're doing. It also is meaningful work for the companions and yeah. they can develop skill. It just seems to work on so many different levels all at the same time. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great, it's, isn't it? It's I think really, it's, really it's, it's certainly model. what motivates me. In the short time that I've been here um, this morning, um, there's been a buzz of activity. Mm. I, I wonder if you might be able to just sort of show me around and, and we could see some of the things that are going on here. With great pleasure. Let's go Lovely. and have a look. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> this is our main shop yep. um, and the, the original shop. And as you can see, we've got huge range of got lots of stuff in uh, stock at the stuff. moment we have and members of the public can just come in and, and have a look around and Absolutely. if they're looking for something i mean you've got a wonderful amount of um, variety and, and wonderful quality as well it it is it is good i mean we we are a bit fussy about what we accept yes. you know yeah. um but we are able to um take some furniture that's perhaps not immediately resaleable into our mm. workshop which i'll show you shortly yeah. that's lovely. um that's great. So some of it would already be in good saleable condition. Yes, most of this. Uh, and, and then some of it would have work done on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And in addition to this shop, we have three others. Um, yeah. We've got a pop-up shop currently in St. Peter Street, St. Albans, yep. where we primarily sell upcycled furniture. Um, then we have one in Boxmoor in Hemel, oh, yeah. and we've also got one in Tring. Um, and Boxmoor is where we also run our eBay um, business from so okay. we've got some so online you can do sales. Some online. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Have a listen. Yeah. Sofas and so, armchairs <laughs> yes. and nestling yes. tables and. And I see you've got electrical goods now. A lot of charities wouldn't touch electrical goods, but you obviously can can manage those. We have a, a what's called pat testing facility yes. that's run by our yeah. companions, so, so you can check um, it all so we over. Can check it all over. Make sure it's safe before and saleable. Before we put it on sale. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, that's really great. Yeah. 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 Would you like to come through to the workshop? I'd love and to. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> So this is Mickey. Oh, hello, um, Mickey. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Hi. Mickey yeah. works primarily in the in yeah. the shop. Lovely. Um, and oh, um, I'm actually a fabricator welder by trade. Okay. And I just had a job offer. Oh, but I'm not quite sure how that. it's going to work. It's only contract job, but, but it's right. good money. Right. But it's what I do. What I used yeah. to do anyway. Right. Mm. I was on the cleaning, but yeah. then I had shoulder surgery last year. Okay. I was out of action, and I said to Karina after about three months, I said I'm getting seriously bored now. I said, that might not be able to push a yeah. hoover, but that can hold a phone and that certainly works. <laughs> <laughs> so they put me in the shops. In, in, <laughs> with, the, with the public, that's yeah. lovely. Well, we're going to go through and have a look uh, in the yeah, workshop, thank, thank you. you very much. Hi, Mike. Mike and Mike. So you're working on some things at the moment in the yeah, workshop? Yeah, we've got all sorts of things down to World War II 
uh, ammunition boxes to yes. small little things. Woodworking. Chairs, yes. room repair, large yeah. chests. Mm. And is that your background? Is that something you've always done in terms of furniture sort no, of no, restoration? No, 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 no. So these are skills you've developed, are they? Uh, yeah, I was lucky enough to have a guy here in charge and he's, he just taught me everything. Wonderful. It must be quite satisfying to see something come in that's got potential but isn't in great shape and then suddenly you see it well, come, come sort of back to, to um, you know, pristine I mean, condition. A lot of this would have gone to landfill. Yeah. Mm. So if you think about all the furniture that we've actually repaired, yes, and sold and given a new home given to, a new home, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Mike will take um, what looks like a fairly boring chest of drawers. Yeah. And yeah, there's only one or two bits in the shop. Isn't there? there are one or two pieces in the shop. Yeah. yeah, I've seen some lovely things you've done painting the drawers different colours. Yeah, and so just bit of life into it. Yeah, absolutely. So exactly. Mike says he's done landfill. So yeah. Right. Well, thank you so much. Lovely thank to meet you, you both, and uh, all the very best with your work. That's Thanks, Beg. Great. See thank you, you. Later. So we could go on then through to the dining room. Yeah, that would be lovely. So it's everything all on the same site in in the building. So the living accommodation yes. is is that upstairs? Yes, the the, the yeah. bedrooms are all upstairs. Mm. Um, so this is our um, kitchen and dining room. People eat together here, as you can see. Yeah, that's lovely. Um, they work together and then sit and eat yeah. and, and so on. Yeah. And this is Abbe yeah. Pierre. I and this see. is Abbe Pierre. <laughs> He's got yes. a lovely face. Yes. That's just such a, a, a beautiful face. And, and then the values and the that values. you try to live by yeah. as, a, as a community. Yeah. That's fantastic. It's lovely. And then out there is the what we call the garden, the yeah. green space. But you know, nice at some point the in the future, space. it's lovely to have the open the space. Fresh air for yeah. the uh, companions yeah. as well. That's great. Yeah. Lovely. Well, thank you. Thanks for showing me around. You're very That's welcome. Lovely. Duncan, you're the chief exec here. I just wanted to say thank you very much for um, giving us the chance to come and have a look around and to meet some of the people and to see some of the work that's going on here. Um, it's so inspiring and we feel very uh, privileged to have been able to, to see some of your work. Um, I wondered if I could ask how you got involved with Emmaus and, and how long you've been here. Yeah, well, I mean, first and foremost, I think the thanks should be to you uh, and everybody associated with the church for your support. We're hugely grateful for that. It will make a big difference. Um, I joined Emmaus in May of last year, came on board uh, after a background of part commercial sector, part working for, mm. for other charities. Um, and for me, great opportunity to be involved in an organisation that, that does so much good work. And the, the model really appealed to me. So the fact that we're much more than just a night shelter, um, that we give people as long as they need to re-establish their independence and address any issues they might have, um, that we give them that sense of purpose yeah. that they need as well, with the, the opportunity to volunteer for our social enterprise. And actually the real win that well, we not only do all that great work for homeless people, but actually there's a sustainability is at the very core of that social enterprise that we run. Um, and the fact that we are based on social enterprise and, and that helps us to a large degree with our, our financial independence, although yeah. the kind of additional contribution we get from support like yours is, is hugely important to us as well. Great. What excites you most about working here and being a part of the Emmaus family? It's, it's, the, it's the difference we make to people's lives. So. Yeah. Um, Whilst we're, we're sorry to see them go on occasion, it's great when a companion moves on yeah. and does successfully re-establish your independence. It's particularly nice when they come back, as they sometimes do, to let us know how they're yeah. going on. Um, yeah, that's the key thing. And actually, that's the end game, but seeing them take the steps on that journey as well, um, mm. seeing them grow, seeing them develop, seeing them become more confident dealing with customers in the shops, yeah. interacting with each other, working with volunteers. Yeah, um, yeah all, all of that. It's very much about the impact we have on the people. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. We're so excited to be able to um, journey along with you during this coming year. And uh, uh, we're looking forward to finding out more about uh, the amazing work you do and hoping in our small way to be able to support that. So thank you. Well, likewise, we're, we're delighted to be working with you. Look forward to, to that period and um, yeah, hugely grateful for your support. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thanks ever so much for taking the time to uh, chat. and. Uh, I understand you're one of the companions here. That's at great. Yeah. yeah. How long have you been here? I've been here for this is my eighth month. Okay. That I've been here. Uh, I started off somewhere else before I come here. Okay. I was in a in a place another community called Battelle. Yeah. 
which is a Christian community. Mm -hmm. uh, so I found the Lord in, okay. in, in Battelle. I was an ex heroin addict, stroke alcoholic. Uh, okay. When I went into Battelle, my life had gone right, right down. I'd been in and out of prison. Uh, from what sort of age did you struggle with those things? Well, right? from a very early age, I, I got into the wrong crowd. I, and yeah. uh, I started smoking cannabis and drinking alcohol at the age of 11. Wow. And it very quickly progressed. I was uh, a heroin addict at 15. Yeah. I was on a prescription at 17. Yeah. I got my first prison sentence at 17. I went to a young offenders yeah. prison at 17. I felt them. Yeah. And then I had a bit of time out. Uh, went back in at 20, had a bit of time out. And then in my late 20s, up until like my mid 30s, I was mm. in and out of like all the local London prisons basically yeah. uh, and then I found Patel when I was 42 okay. I went into a treatment centre at 35 yeah. in Bournemouth mm. which failed miserably not because of them but because of me and uh, yeah these are hard things though and sometimes addiction isn't an easy yeah. No. Uh, yeah. thing to come out of No. but since being here in, in Emmaus, yeah. uh, I've recently found a job, mm. which I'm waiting for a start date with Morgan and Sindel, which is a property maintenance, yes. yeah, well, yeah. So, uh, subcontracting from okay. Council, uh, which Duncan mentioned one day in our, in our house meeting. Mm. And uh, I gave a couple of days thought about it, and I thought, oh, what have I got to lose, like, you know? Yeah. And, I, and I went and spoke with Duncan, and he'd done all the uh, the stuff to get me yeah. in to the college and uh, I had to do two weeks college yeah. and then uh, I've done two weeks work experience I've got a guaranteed job interview and uh, about a month ago I got uh, I got offered the job yeah. but they want to stick me in college and to do okay. groundworks and stuff yeah. like that to better myself in yeah. the area that I'm good at. Wow. Well, I think you've come a long way and it's a yeah. thank you for being so um, um, honest and, and, and sharing something of yeah. your, your journey, your story. And so, yeah. what if I could just finish with one last question? What, what are your hopes for the future? What, what 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 would be your dream, sort of, in the years that lie ahead? Right, my hope for the future is is to obviously move on in goodwill from Emmaus mm. into this job, yeah, uh, and to really because uh, I don't do any of the stuff that I used to do before, so. Mm. Uh, like uh, really just to look after my mum and dad really because okay. like, I've put them really through it over the years and okay. uh, I'm quite pure really I mean the only yeah. thing uh, I do do is, is smoke yeah. cigarettes so yeah. I mean, like, we've all got vices and all <laughs> yeah, we have yeah I mean but sure. I'm hoping to like uh, knock that on the head I mean like, there's a guy in here that's inspired me actually he's, okay. he's just stops and he's like yeah. four weeks that's so yeah. uh, I mean, with nothing, no patches, no gum, no nothing. So wow. like, it can be done. Yeah, yeah. And he's smoked a lot longer than me. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. <laughs> he's like he's got a good twenty years on me. So. Sure. Great. Well, thank you so much You're for welcome. taking the time out to uh, to meet with me. It's been really inspiring to hear something about your story, and I yeah. just wish you um, every blessing um, for the thank future. You. I hope things work out really well for you. Thank and, you. Thank you. Take care. And God bless yourself. Thank as well. you. Thank you.